Alright, let's get started. Uh, I am Battle for Serenity, coming to you guys uh, for Seracnia uh, Triskelis. Um, this is going to be my second stream. I'm really excited uh, to get started on this one and get back to our game of Old World. Um, I will be giving a couple of minutes for people to realize that I'm streaming and that we are going uh, before I jump right in. Uh, I have a lot that I want to talk about today, a lot of things um, that I've either discovered in plays of Old World since my last stream or just things that as I was rewatching, I realized um, I had either mixed some terms around or things that I was doing that I didn't take the time uh, to go over that I think are really good, really good attributes uh, to the game. Uh, they're going to make it really interesting. So, um, we have a lot of that coming up here soon. I do want to take a minute to talk about some of the other streamers and some of the other games that will be up um, here in the next week. Uh, so on Tuesday, of course, we have Tigragonia. She will be doing um, another playthrough of... I'm going to say this wrong. I want to say Rackin. Uh, it might be Rayukin. Uh, she can jump in and correct me um, at one of these points, I'm sure. Uh, and then on Tuesday, we'll have Tremlin coming to you with more more Lord of the Rings, um, Shadow of Mordor. Uh, really exciting, really fun. Um, Tremlin is working hard on that one for you guys to bring as creative content uh, as he can with that one. Um, having a lot of fun with that, that rival system with the orcs and whatnot. Then next Wednesday, we will... Oh, no, that Wednesday's trembling. Uh, Thursday. We're on Thursday. Thursday will be Monster Stories 2 with Cosmic Raccoon. And then I am totally forgetting the fact that tomorrow uh, we will have uh, Skittles playing some more Minecraft. I'm really looking forward to that as well. All right. So I'm going to pull up the game here. So a couple of things that I did not go over last time, um, right off the bat, that I really think that I should. So you can come in here and you can focus on any of the skills, um, abilities, um, specific event names, nations, anything like that, that has this kind of um, different color text to it. You can see that as I mouse over it, uh, those screens open up, but if I hold down shift, that screen will stay open um, as I move my mouse around and I can come over here and I can actually see some of those other things so I can actually see, you know, who is Marcus? All right, these are Marcus's abilities. These are the different things and if there's anything under here uh, that I don't understand, whether it's a specific trait and how that it's going to affect things or whether it is one of the strengths or weaknesses I can kind of mouse over and it'll give me a little bit more of detail to everything that I'm doing which really helps kind of keep things straight especially when you start getting a large court uh, later on all right so court minister mark the courtier, Marcus the Minister, has come under fire for his outspoken views on national identity and encouraging domestic development. Marcus the Minister fears that too many resources go towards the discovery of new lands while people in their own cities languish. He desires a new investment in the Roman nation and what it means to, to its citizens. Alright, so we have two options here. I can either make Marcus happy, spend a little bit of money, and uh, make one of the families happier about epics, which will focus in on our cities. Or I can upset Marcus, uh, but the family will still be happy, uh, but it'll be happy about exploration instead. I believe, coming over here, so we're gonna look at our ambitions just to remind ourselves there were two goals uh, that we were working towards last time. The first one being that we want to complete four cities so that we get that nice legitimacy bonus. Uh, and we also wanted to enact the exploration law. So coming back over here to New Horizons, it's going to make the most sense for us if we're going to enact that 
uh, exploration law for us to just go ahead and say it's folly to ignore the world beyond uh, Rome. We've got to pay attention to what everybody else is doing. Uh, personally, that's how I would run uh, my government anyway, so that works. That works out. You can't ignore your neighbors and just hope for the best. All right, cycling through. Let's see what units we got here. All right, we've got at least one worker who is ready for something to do. Um, I could take a moment here and build the hanging garden and get myself a wonder. Wonder is going to help me increase the border. It's going to give me increased citizen growth, um, not only here in Rome, but it's also going to give me a 20% citizen growth bonus across my entire empire. So that could definitely be something um, that would be really handy, but it's early on in the game. That's going to take 400 of my stone to be able to build and it's also going to take 200 of my wood right now my wood resources are are fairly low uh, i'm not producing any wood i can see that uh, i would be able to buy or sell some of my extra resources to make enough money to buy that if i needed to uh, right now though it is just too early in the game to worry um, about wonders um, it could give me a very, very strong start for the first couple of turns. Uh, don't get me wrong, those would be bonuses um, that could potentially go well for a run. I just prefer to do a little bit of a buildup on my cities first so that I'm getting a, a positive amount of resources. I don't like to go negative and I don't like to run too low on stone especially um, just because it's going to be very important when building um, new things later on. Right now, all of the formas, all of the treasuries, everything that is going to allow us to get bonus monies, is going to allow us um, to help our cities grow faster, uh, everything like that, it's all going to rely on us having uh, stone to be able to build. So I don't want to run too low on that resource. Checking out our scout over here. So our scout, of course, is just exploring and harvesting resources. So one thing I noticed uh, that I had not noticed last time at all uh, that makes your exploring a little bit more handy is every time you discover these guys, if you watch closely, you will see um, you get a small food or gold bonus from them as you initially walk over them. And they become sighted by your scout, uh, which is another little handy bonus for exploration that it took me a little while to notice. It's not something that it makes... Uh, super obvious it just kind of pops up on the edge of your screen and then goes past over that resource um, so I was really in in interested to see that last time hey we have Joel here in the chat hello Joel nice to see you so this is old world um, old world it's kind of a event driven civilization builder so we are Rome we are over here we are Romulus the brilliant of Rome um, we have our wife here, Queen Consort Nubinet. Uh, we have our princess here, Dominita, who is my niece. I've got that right this time. It is hard for me to keep track of these kids because all of the names are, are very, very similar. Uh, so my niece here is going to be our heir. Um, and basically, I am taking this family through the story um, of the founding of Egypt. Or not Egypt, sorry. Queen, uh, Queen Consort kind of threw me off there for a second. Rome, very different, very, very different. I feel horrible that I made that mistake, but you guys understand. All right, going on to the next unit. We've also got another scout over here in Rome that is ready to go. Let's see, we've got some uncovered fog over here. Let's make sure we're making sure to get the resources on our way. We're not wasting those movements just to move over here and explore a little bit faster. We do need those resources. It's still very early. Uh, we want to make sure that we are maximizing uh, the potential of that scout as much as possible. Um, a lot of people will put the priority on exploring that space over making sure um, that we harvest these resources on the way. I really think that's a lot of loss in that potential, especially considering uh, we can see that we have a lot of water surrounding us that's so going to become important for our scouts to get over and explore more later on. So we want to make sure that with a limited amount of space left to explore, we're maximizing their potential by gathering all of those resources as we go and clear out 
the, the little bit of space that we have left remaining. All right, coming over here, it looks like Rome can build a new building. Uh, it does not have any citizens right now. It is close. So I'm looking down here uh, when I'm talking about this as far as citizen growth. Uh, one of the nice things is we can see a lot of what is affecting it. So we have a base growth of eight. We're getting a bonus because we do have this city connected to our capital, which I would hope considering this is our capital. Uh, and then we've got one farmer uh, that is one of our specialists and he is increasing our ability uh, to gain more citizens. Obviously, if there's more food available, people are going to be more willing to move into the city. Uh, and he is kind of sitting there helping us out on that. Coming down here, we've got culture. Uh, so this is going to um, increase your border size. It's going to slowly add tiles to the city. It's going to be a really important one. It's going to allow you to reach the resources that are near you. Um, it's going to allow you to have more opportunities to put um, citizens on those tiles. It's going to be really important as you go later on. When you start out, it's going to try to grab any useful near source or resource that is nearby, um, but is not going to be able to reach, of course, everything. We can see that we have um, some marble and we can see that we have some silver over here. Eventually, that city will work on reaching those resources uh, so that it will have that bonus to help it increase and grow. And then over here we can see that we've got our discontent. Um, discontent is how unhappy the city are. Um, it is, it's, it's got a lot of different things that it can, can build up. Um, certain events will trigger extra discontent, uh, maybe because of the outcome upsets your people. Um, if you are hurrying things, killing too many people, that's something that can create discontent. Um, if you have a governor in that city and that governor is just really bad at running things, that can run or create good discontent. Uh, right now I'm getting a plus eight bonus for the difficulty level being fairly average. Um, I'm getting a negative one because one of my cities is not connected to the capital. That's something that I want to pay attention to as I go on. I want to make sure that I either have roads between all of my cities. Um, or when I put them on the map, just making sure that they are connected to rivers um, and that other cities are connected to that river at some point as well. Um, rivers are, they're huge. There's a reason why so much of society um, was based on rivers, whether that was in Egypt, whether it was in China, whether it was Mesopotamia. We, we started at rivers uh, because it was so easy to move things up and down those rivers it, it eliminated that that travel distance so efficiently it made trade possible in ways that might have been impossible otherwise just because the water made it much easier to move those items um, so in the game here you get a huge bonus um, it's very easy to connect your cities if you're paying attention to those rivers uh, make sure you're kind of keeping an eye out on where they are on the map and if you have an urban point where you have a choice of being on the river or off the river, um, some of them will expand out from the rivers instead of along the side, you wanna make sure that you're positioning yourself in the best spot. All right, so what are we actually going to build? We can see that our defending or our, 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 our city is a little upset um, because of the family unit that it has. Uh, basically what that means is that this unit here um, was built for another family. It is not one of their units and it is not over here defending them. So um, you become one of the family units by being trained in one of the family cities. So I'm gonna just gonna come up here and I'm gonna let them train themselves a slinger. Uh, that is going to give me a ranged unit, which is always a little bit more handy for defense. It means that they can hit people as they're coming up to the city and not just as they're right outside. And because this city is building it, I know it'll belong to this family, so he will get a bonus for defending the city and um, it'll help reduce the discontent. My wife is ill. So sometimes I just have the, the luck in this game where I go through three or four wives in one character and it always starts out really inconspicuously uh, with them getting ill. I feel like sometimes my character is just randomly poisoning 
his wife behind their back and just coming up with the excuse of, oh my god, you randomly got sick, because there's no way anyone would legitimately believe uh, that so many people died of sickness from being with this guy, I swear. I can see here as well, my the Duchess uh, Calperna, who actually is my daughter, is now 10 years old. Um, when characters become 10 years old, they're able to be tutored by courtiers that you have in your court. So I will take a look at that here in a second. Scouts encounter an expedition of strangers following a similar route. They call themselves Carthaginians, and hail from a distant land beyond the horizon. Sharing a cordial meal, the two groups exchange stories and souvenirs. How shall our scouts conclude this meeting? Alright, so I've got a couple of choices here. I can show them goodwill. That's going to help build positive opinion with Carthage. Um, if they are going to be someone that I deal with a lot later on, whether through trade or something like that, that could be a positive choice. I can see over here on the mini-map that Carthage is actually pretty far away from me. We're not going to run into each other too often. Um, as far as city placement, most likely, they could always kind of jump over here and start taking some of these points if they get over here first, but most likely I'm going to have more issues with Egypt and with Greece being the closest to, uh, at least right off the bat, until they fight with each other and maybe one of them comes out on top. So keeping them as a friend with them being at a distance might be handy. I'm not going to have to worry about the same clashes um, from being so close as I'm going to have to worry about the other two. Uh, I can also just keep the meeting civil. This is going to cost me less money, uh, but it's not going to give me that bonus in opinion. And then if I really wanted to focus on um, a war-based civilization, if I just really wanted to go out there, uh, maybe if they were really close and they were moving into the same area, uh, then I could just choose to dominate them. That's going to, of course, upset Carthage, but it's going to send us right into war with them. It would make it really easy for me to immediately attack them. Um, and usually, usually there is a lot of legitimacy that can come from military maneuvers. This is a historical time period, and military uh, maneuvers are, are very important to what the pro population perceives you as. So, However, I think I am just going to go with showing them goodwill. They're a good distance away. Trading with them later on might become important. Something I want to keep um, options available at least. I can always change my mind later. All right, coming up here to the Duchess, I can click on her photo there, and over here I will see the actions that I can do. We now have the tutor child action available. So right now I have four courtiers that could teach. I can see over here. Um, they are only available to teach while they are not on a job. So a job would be they are governing one of the cities or they are um, a general for one of your troops. Um, I think there are one or two, of course, events can take them away. If anything like that is distracting these people, they are not going to be available um, to teach your character. The sucky part about that, of course, being that they won't be able to do that bonus. It takes about three turns each time you go to train them, and it costs, I want to say, about 200 gold? Yeah, 250 gold right now. Um, I can see that cost right down here where it's going to show me... Um, that's going to take 250 gold and two orders for me to tell him to go ahead and uh, start tutoring her so that she can get um, a chance to improve either her wisdom, her charisma, her courage, or her discipline. Obviously, depending on whatever their highest scores are, it's going to make it easier for them to teach. So if I come over here um, to the members of my court, I can kind of see Obviously, he's going to get a huge bonus on wisdom. Um, if I want to focus her on helping boost our science going forward, this is going to be the guy that I'm going to want to make sure is the first one um, to train her, just because he's going to be the one that's going to give her a, a good chance of getting that wisdom. 32% um, compared to the 12% that you get for having no points into that skill. Uh, that's a pretty significant improvement in chance that you're going to get that. Um, there is also a chance that they will just trigger a random event. The random event will just give you a little bit more say in what ability it might be. Um, it could turn out to be a weakness. It could turn out to be a strength. It could be 
a plus two to wisdom. It could be a plus two to wisdom and a negative one to discipline because of the trait. It, it's a little bit more all over the board. So just realize that when you are setting these people up to tutor them, what you're going to get is characters who have much higher scores that are going to make them more efficient. Um, but with those higher scores is going to become uh, a much... It's a much more... I'm trying to think of the, the best word for this. A much more complicated character. You're going to have to balance out both positives and negatives. You're going to have to navigate those events. Um, so just make sure that you're ready for that to be happening with that character. Uh, if you reach a point where a character has reasonably good stats, you may not want to consider continue um, tutoring them because that creates the possibility of more of those events that could give you one of those traits that might actually end up detrimental for whatever you're trying to do. So right now, it is fairly early in the game. I actually have three people that are going to cost a little bit less. It looks like Marcus um, is just a little bit more expensive, most likely because over here I can see he doesn't particularly like me. Uh, he's kind of being a jerk. He's saying he needs an extra 50 gold just to uh, teach my daughter how to... Uh, be charismatic so I'm actually going to just hire the seer Cerberus and good old pie face here pie face the younger what worries me about this is that at some point there must have been a pie face the older um, and I could just with a face like that this it's, it's a face only a, a, a parent could love apparently uh, pie face the older I hope is, is very proud of his son okay Let's see what units we still have to move got our scout here he's kind of at the edge of what he can explore here he can't get past these mountains um, so instead I'm going to have him start focusing a little bit more on harvesting any of the resources that he didn't get the last walk through uh, and then harvesting any resources that have reset remember uh, every about I want to say 10 turns but I'm spacing the exact count right now these are going to be able to be harvested again um, so the resources aren't a one and done there's something that we want to check on regularly uh, through time harvest that game that I'm on top of right now get that bonus food keep moving over towards this area that we want to explore we're gonna move on to those horses so that we can get uh, the abilities there I'm out of orders so I'm gonna go ahead and end my turn one thing I forgot to go over uh, last time that I really wanted to point out so if I am struggling, I really want to end up on these horses. I need that 33 gold, let's say. Uh, I have a couple of different choices. Um, I went over earlier a buy and a sell option. So I can come over here and I can sell an individual item of food. I can sell that for 2.7 gold. It's not going to give me a ton of money. Um, but if I am hurting for every single piece of gold, that's going to be an option. I don't have a ton of food right now, um, so that's probably where I would want to keep my cells uh, right now. Between 1 and 10, I can see if I hold down shift, I can sell 10 food at a time and instead of 2.7 per 1. It's just going to give me that 27, make it a little bit easier to see uh, without having to do the math how much 10 of them is going to give you. Um, and then if I hold down control, I can actually sell 100 of that food um, and that would give me 262 Point eight gold um, so that I'd have that available we have Tigragonia in chat as well hello Tigragonia how are you doing today uh, I know he that face is perfect for that name I don't know that you could have you could have asked for a better look when you see the name uh, pie face the younger I really hope that not just the name runs in the family but the face as well because I'm imagining uh, pie face the older with the exact same look but maybe a little bit more gray in the beard all right so coming over here we can see with orders we also have the option to buy orders with military training which is going to be right over here right now um, I'm making an okay amount of training. I don't have a ton of units, and training actually caps out at 2,000. Uh, at that point, it's just going to convert uh, into extra, I wanna say orders or civics. I'm not 100% sure at the moment when we get there. Uh, I will go over that. Uh, but I can see if I wanna spend 100 of that training, I can actually buy an extra order. So I'm going to do that really quick. Now I have the option um, he wasn't quite done. We had just run out of orders, so I can actually use that uh, 
to have him continue moving and then maybe I want to buy one more so that he can get these horses harvested this turn um, maybe I really needed that 33 gold who knows that's always an option that you have um, and it's something that comes really in handy to help push your units if you're you're right outside of where you need to be you have one turn to get to that city site um, before your rival gets to it um, and you just need to spend a little bit of extra resources to get there I like that you have that option it's not that you move three tiles and that you're done you have that option to continue moving you just have to balance it against the extra resources that it's going to cost you uh, to be able to keep doing that all right a bunch of different things going on we've got Egypt who is now at peace with the Vandals and simultaneously at war so most likely they had multiple events going on in their turn every once in a while it'll pop up like that if I'm really particularly worried about it I can go into the um, the diplomacy screen and I can kind of get a little bit more of a breakdown see what's going on um, and what they actually ended the turn at see from news abroad uh, that the king of Babylon is dead they have a new ruler a queen this time uh, their opinion of me uh, is cautious and if I want to know exactly what that means um, I can go over here and I can see uh, she's got a negative 40 she's a little bit jealous she's she's seeing that I um, have a greater legitimacy name it's actually uh, cognomen I want to say is how you pronounce it I am not actually sure how to pronounce that word but the general idea being the modifier that you have attached your name down here so I can see that I am Romulus the brilliant um, the reason I am considered the brilliant is because of the amount of technologies uh, that I have given to my civilization that that monomer that's attached to your name is kind of based on what you're doing if you're building a lot of improvements for your civilization then it'll be something about how you're a builder um, if you are building a lot of technologies it'll be something about how smart you are um, brilliant magnificent stuff like that um, and if you are focusing on attacking um, fighting it'll be much more of a, a military based moniker all right my wife is no longer sick I guess he didn't poison her or if he did he didn't succeed this time and I have excess, uh, successfully exerted my influence upon Pieface. Uh, so Pieface is now influenced by me. He's got a plus 40. Pieface likes me a lot more. It must be what he's giving me that face for. It's just his happy face. Harvest a little bit of silver, some more elephants. Harvesting is huge. It's something that in my first couple of games I kept letting fall to the wayside. I saw the benefit of the extra resources but I would get distracted um, because there were so many different things going on and I wasn't prioritizing um, harvesting these resources as much as I feel like I should have uh, it's something that as you're getting used to the game you can feel kind of overwhelmed by because it takes a little bit more management especially early on when you don't have an automated explorer you have to be able to uh, earn that technology um, but early on being able to get 50 or even 30 gold um, by just moving within a couple of tiles so I got 50 from that silver I got another 50 from that elephant um, that's huge that's 100 gold in one turn while I'm making 20 gold per turn uh, that's five turns worth of use for using one order to cover those two plus you know the two or three orders just to kind of move around this area um, that is something that when you're making a limited amount of resources like we are now is it's hard to understate how effective it can be um, it's something I really encourage you guys to focus on get this gold here kind of exploring this area um, again if you are exploring and you move on to hills it is going to take a little bit extra effort for them to move on to there so that's something to keep in mind um, but it's also going to help them see that area a little bit better it's going to make it so that they can uncover a little bit more fog of war so make sure when you are moving your scout along they're going to try to pass and go around these hills as much as possible in the short term but if you have them moving a large distance of course they're just going to be focused on getting there as easily as possible um, and if they have to walk over too many hills it's going to reduce the speed at which they're going to be able to do that 
All right, we have another city that is ready to build. Oh, our fishing city over here. Oh, I love this city. So much food available. Um, so I can see that they have three citizens ready to go out, and they have three fishing spaces already set up. Um, I can see if I add another fisher, that is going to increase citizen growth. It's going to give me another five food per year, and it's also going to increase my science per year. Um, right now, with how small my cities are, with how limited all of my resources are, uh, this is huge. It gives me the ability to increase this city size. It gives me a little bit more consistent food production, um, and it lets me know that I'm going to get a really nice bonus to citizen growth, so I know that I will have a lot of specialists coming into this city. Already, it's got more specialists than my capital, um, so that these fish resources and focusing on them right off the bat, um, it's already showing you how effective those resources can be, especially if you are paying attention to which specialists you're setting them on. Sometimes you really need stone, but it makes more sense to prioritize something like fish, where you can get that extra citizen growth um, so that you have those points building up, so that by the time that first citizen finishes, you have three more citizens that are available to be assigned, whereas uh, here in my, my capital, I'm still only sitting at two because of how slowly it is producing um, those citizens um, and how l much less of a bonus they have for it. All right, my worker over here just coming over to build these last little bit of nets. So now that I have expanded my city a little bit, uh, I have built those, I have that not a bad start for our first we're only in year number 26 uh, out of year 200 so about an eighth of the way through um, and we are sitting at a fairly strong start so uh, first 25 turns I want to take a quick minute and I want to take a look at my empire and make sure that I am still focusing on my ambitions that I am still paying attention to what my allies or enemies might be doing and I'm still paying attention to what my military looks like. Um, so obviously I have no extra military units. I am building extra military here and I have my warrior over there, um, but I definitely want to start considering a military sometime soon just because Greece being so close makes it extremely easy for them to strike me. Um, and then of course, I also have the Vandals just chilling out over here, looking for any opportunity uh, to mess with me that they, they can find. Um, they've got some really good city sites over here that I'm gonna wanna take eventually. And all of that is going to depend on me having enough military uh, to, to be effective in those. Um, I can see that I still need at least one more city for my expeditions. That's something that I'm going to want to pay attention to as well. Um, it means that after I finish the Slinger, I'm most likely going to be wanting to look at finishing up a citizen, especially now that I have set up these citizens to be working on over here. Um, I'm going to get a lot of bonus food which is going to help replace the 100 food that it would cost me to do a citizen now that I have a fairly efficient amount of food coming in. Um, then it'll make a lot more sense for me to spend that 100 food uh, instead of in the beginning where it's a little bit more rare of a resource, I might need it for something else. Oh no, my mother's died. Oh, that was out of nowhere. So one weird thing about this game is sometimes you will get characters that actually, they actually like warn you, like, I'm getting sick, uh, things are happening, and then other times you'll just have a random moment where one day they're fine and the next minute they're just dead. And it always kind of throws me for a loop, especially if it is a governor or someone um, that I really count on, uh, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, nope, sorry, uh, not quite good enough. Uh, we're out of here. I just drop dead between one turn and the next. All right. My niece, who's my successor right now, uh, has absorbed a couple more lessons. She's got a plus one to her wisdom. So she is studying right now. She's in that period of her life. She's slowly going to gain um, traits based on the school of thought that I put her into or just 
randomly. They're not always going to get specifically that trait that you're training them for. There's always that chance they're going to gain a point in another trait as well. Um, she gained a little bit in wisdom, which never hurts. And then the Duke Tiberius is old enough to be tutored as well. Looks like we got divination. So if I've forgotten what divination uh, earned for me, what kind of technology uh, it boosted, I can kind of hover over that. I can see that it gave me the ability to build shrines. There are three different types of them. Uh, oh, four, sorry. Um, two different military shrines. Uh, one citizen shrine and one that's going to increase my money and my borders. I believe that each of those is unlocked by a city, so I will actually only have resource to or access to three of those. Uh, and the fourth one will be locked, just like that that family. But I'm not 100%. Shrines aren't something that I've spent a huge amount of time on. So hopefully here in this game I'll get a chance to play around with that. Uh, and we'll figure it out together. Okay, so this is one of the really, really, really cool things um, I think about the technologies in this game. Is even the music is specifically locked to a technology. I think it's really fun that you have to actually get to a point. Uh, where they have things like public concerts in their cities before it starts playing the music in the background uh, it, Not huge effect for the game, but aesthetically it just creates a good feeling. It makes me feel better it Makes it feel a little bit more realistic All right, so um, The game is recommending that I go for rhetoric Rhetoric would give me a forum, which makes it so that I have more civics. That's going to make it easier for me to enact different things. Um, it's also going to give me the choice between epics and exploration. I already know that I have the ambition to enact exploration. Uh, so I'm going to go with that because I really want to get those points for that ambition as soon as possible. And then our worker over here is done. So I can kind of mouse over and is recommending three different things right now. Um, one of those is actually a shrine. So the shrine that it wants me to build um, is going to give me plus 10 gold a year for adjacent resources. Um, it's going to enable me to build the Acolyte Specialist. If I want to come in here and see exactly what an Acolyte does, just hold down shift. I can see that a basic Acolyte is going to give me plus 2 civics. That is going to help the borders here grow. That's going to help the city become bigger in size so it can expand and gather more of the nearby resources. It's going to give me a plus one to science, so it's going to give me a little bit of a science boost. Um, right now, technology-wise, I can't really build libraries or anything else, so it doesn't hurt. Um, it's one of the few things that is going to help that, uh, but it's not its not huge either. It's kind of up to me. This is 60 stone, so it's, it's not expensive, uh, but it is... It is something that is going to be a somewhat significant investment. I mean, that's that's a sixth of all of, or no, a tenth of all of my stone. Um, not so much that it's going to knock it into a realm, but it's going to make it so that it, I don't have the option for any of these wonders. So it's something I'm going to want to consider um, as I'm going about that. I'm actually, ooh, Ishtar Gate plus two citizen growth per year, plus six, and then when it's built, it's also going to be plus 100 to border growth or civics. It's going to take almost all of the marble that I have, but that is a really, that is a beautiful bonus as far as just helping the cities grow as quickly as possible. Uh, let's come over here and check out the pyramids and see what they do. So that's going to give me extra civics and it's going to give me extra orders. If I was running into an issue of running out of orders all of the time, which I kind of am, but it's more of a I'm moving a lot, then it's really creating a big issue. Um, it's also going to give me a negative 50% start law cost. So to enact uh, exploration, it's going to cost me some civics. It's going to cost me some... Um, some kind of effort to to put those laws into place and this is going to make that a lot cheaper something that would be a huge bonus if I felt like I've had low civics but I'm already at 47 um, which for the first couple of turns isn't isn't horrible I'm gonna focus on the Ishtar gate um, I really want to get that citizen growth um, so that I can focus on getting as many specialists as possible early on and I can exploit those resources and expand that city size It's really gonna make my life a lot easier 
All right, my other worker over here is done. He also has a couple of different options. He can build a shrine here as well, the same shrine, the Shrine of Vestra. I might do that. That's not adjacent to any particularly good resources, though, and I just used up a lot of my stone, so I want to be careful about that. I have a choice to build a hamlet. Hamlets are really nice. They can give you a lot of money, uh, but they're going to take a little bit of my food. They also develop over time, so you can see it develops into a village in 20 years, and then it will keep developing beyond that point. So building those early on in the game so that they can level up quickly, they can be worth more resources, is one strategy you can take. Um, I will most likely be focusing on that soon, but I just used up a lunch, bunch of my stone, so I actually want to come over here, and I want to get them building. Um, give me a, another nine stone per turn. That way I can keep building this this up. I can keep having access to those wonders. Uh, a little bit of salt. Couple of horses. Some camels. I love how many resources just give you a ton of gold in this game. I'm now known as Romulus the Intrepid. Um, so if I hover over this here, I can kind of see what things are creating this title. Um, I can see that I have a legitimacy of plus 50. I can see that I've contacted true tribes. I can see the bonus for that. I can see I've contacted four nations, and I have a bonus for that. I've got a certain amount of landmarks that I discovered first, so my civilization got to name them. I get a certain amount of points for that one. Um, the amount of ruins that I've explored, so those goody huts that are on the map that gave us a bonus for finding them, um, I get points that are going to go into my title for that. And then of course just the amount of tiles revealed, so the amount that my um, scout has explored and pushed back that fog of war, um, all of that is going to track count in uh, what is creating that title. I have the ability to name this, I'm just going to leave it Kaiserbach Valley. He is out. Ah, Pie Face has finished one of his lessons. One of the children. Let's see. On more than one occasion, the court fool, Pie Face, has been discovered tutoring the royal children. His lessons? Tossing dung at the heads of noble families, covering the palace walls with offensive scribble, and riding goats through the streets of Rome. Dear God, Pie Face. So, I didn't actually realize that he was the court fool, which makes his face make a little bit more sense uh but talk about being born into like the, the job like this guy found the perfect role for him in this society uh that also apparently just includes riding random goats through the streets of the city just just to screw with people so a couple of different options here um i can basically say he's just a lovable prankster that's going to make him happy with me uh, but I can see that that might lead to future events. Maybe it'll upset somebody. He throws dung at the wrong person. Uh, and that might upset that person because he's such a close friend, friend of mine. Uh, I can tell the royal guards to refuse him. Basically, he will not be a member of my court anymore. Uh, he made too many foolish decisions. I'm just going to boot him out. That is going to make all of the families happier. Um, I'd be happier if someone that was throwing dung at me got thrown out of the court as well uh, but that's a little bit too easy for them they're, they're nobles they deserve a little bit of difficulty in their life uh, and then I can give him 40 lashes uh, that is going to do a negative 30 um, discontent in Rome basically the people are going to see that you lashed him for screwing around it's going to make them a lot more happy they're gonna know that you're you're paying attention to that stuff and they're also probably gonna be a little bit afraid that the guy that was having a little bit of fun just got lashed in front of him it's also going to force him to leave court so i have two of these options there's going to lose me a minister um coming over here to look at his stats he's not fantastic uh but he's not horrible either other than the fact that he has a negative two on discipline he's not actually that bad and the plus five on charisma is it's not significant but it's it's, it's pretty good it's he's useful for training people at the very least uh he might be a little bit of a fool but uh that face is growing on me. What can I say? Uh, he, he is lovable. All right. Princess is growing up. So she is 12 years old now. Uh, at 12, she's both able to have um, some tutors and she is able to study something specific. So she doesn't have any points yet that are leading her in any specific direction. So I can really go wherever I want with that. 
Um, the princess here is focused on discipline. That's what she has the most of. Um, excuse me. So I'm probably going to want to stay away from discipline. I'm not going to want to double up on that. I already have one person who has a strong um, discipline bonus in the family. I'm going to want to maybe come over here. I'm kind of between charisma, which is going to give me extra extra civics. It's going to make it easier for her to enact laws and stuff like that if she becomes a leader later on. Um, or philosophy, which is going to increase her ability um, to give us new technologies. I'm just going to go completely out there. I'm going to say tactics. Maybe I'll put her in charge of the military later on. High face is the most charismatic guy that we've got here. Let's not lie. All right, lots of stuff going on. I can see that Greece has begun construction on the Hanging Gardens. Um, either they did that because they saw that I had started construction on the Ishtar Gates and they wanted to get a jump ahead. Um, or it was just a, a lucky move on their part. Either way, um, if I was already building the Hanging Gardens or if that was something that I had been considering, it's nice that the game kind of give me, gives me a heads up. Uh, I can see that Babylon is now at truce with the Danes. My brother, Duke Remus, uh, has proven his good sense and insight. He's gained extra wisdom. And then the Duchess has also increased in her wisdom. And one of her tutor missions has led to an event. So uh, I told you guys that it has that ability to either give her a bonus trait um, or lead to an event that might do something extra. It looks like we're going to be able to see one of those um, here soon. And it looks like good old Pie Face managed to increase her charisma as well. Way to be effective, Pie Face. All right. Cerberus and Calpurnia spent a dirty day in the nearby fields, digging up stones, examining soil, sketching plants. The young student seems to have a natural affinity for agriculture. What shall Cerberus emphasize in his lessons? A couple of different choices here. So, I can have her gain the trait of becoming a cultivator um, as a leader, so leading the civilization. That's going to mean that all farms and pastures get a plus 20% output. Um, that means that if she is leading my civilization, I'm going to have a, a significant bonus in food growth. Um, that is something I really want to consider if I'm having any food issues, um, especially early game. That would be super effective. Um, but one thing to keep in mind is Romulus, he's not super old. Uh, 49? Actually, he's getting up there in the years. He might actually die sometime soon. Um, you want to consider at this point how old he is how likely it is that she's going to become a leader anytime soon um, and what kind of resources she's most likely going to need um, to help her be an effective leader when that time comes. So she could also become a Delver. That's going to give her the same kind of bonus, um, but it is going to apply to mines and quarries. So it's going to give a bonus to iron and it's going to give a bonus to stone. Um, also huge, 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 huge. I love that. And then naturalist, um, it's going to give her that bonus with lumber mills and groves. So that's going to give her bonus wood, and it's going to give her a bonus on um, luxury resources like honey, lavender, uh, stuff like that that we will gain access to later on. Um, I find usually in games I am struggling constantly for mineral or not minerals, uh, stone. So I'm going to go with delver. And then while I'm at it, I'm going to come over here and I want to make her my new heir um, just because I've decided now that I have my own daughter and she's getting old enough, I would rather have her be the heir than um, have my brother's daughter be one. Uh, that is going to upset my brother's daughter a little bit. She's going to move from first in succession to most likely number three because it's going to move her under my son here. Um, but this early in the game it's eh, eh. she's not going to get too upset none of the families are too raging mad at me um, it's a safe enough move um, she's also not bad as far as discipline goes um, she's going to get me a lot of money but it's not something I'm really worried about right now so come over here I'm going to take a hit um, on negative four in legitimacy 
you don't want to change your successor successor too often. Um, it's going to upset your people each time you do it. So you want to limit it to one or two times. Um, unless, of course, you're forced to. Every once in a while, they're dying so quickly um, that you've just got to do what you've got to do. Um, but try to limit it. It's also going to take some civics. Um, I have plenty of civics right now. I'm not going to worry about that. But it's something you always want to balance as you're going through the game. And then since those tutor missions are done, I also have the ability um, to have them retutor her for the next three turns. I only have enough money for two of them. So pie face, you're being effective right now. I'm, I'm putting you back in charge. I'm trusting you, man. Um, and then let's see. I said courage. Does anyone have? So no one that I have is particularly good at teaching courage. It's going to be uh, random. They're all the same more or less oh no looks like service is going to get the best bonus um because he has high wisdom uh it's gonna make it a little bit easier for him oh no i'm reading the wrong line entirely i'm reading this one uh, okay so everybody has a 12 percent bonus i'm just gonna go with him he had the best luck last time um just stick with it all right we've got another event here one day on the training grounds Pres princess calpernica notices a lame mongrel begging for scraps. She takes the creature into her care and nurses him back to health. From that point forward, the creature never leaves Calpernica's side. The dog possesses a complete devotion to Calpernica, direct result of his master's training. Awesome, I am liking the fact that I chose her um, to become my successor, and then that same turn, she gets herself a pet dog. It, it feels like the game's rewarding me for choosing her. All right, so a couple of different choices here. One, she can become compassionate. That's going to give her a plus one to charisma. It's going to give her a plus one to uh, discipline, which is going to make it easier for her to get both civics, and it's going to make it easier for her to get money. I can see that that's also going to be um, a modifier for certain characters. So a negative 20 opinion for ruthless characters ruthless characters are not going to enjoy that someone else is compassionate um, it's the exact opposite skill uh, so those are going to offset each other and then other compassionate characters are going to like the fact that I'm compassionate um, and it's going to make it more a little bit more demand uh, anyway um, teaches a system of rewards and punishments she can become strict uh, so as a leader all new infantry units are going to get plus 50 XP and as a governor it's going to be plus 100 so I did say that I wanted to expand my military and she is gaining um, courage which is kind of military focused so that would be a really good one for her however it's also only infantry units so range units that's not going to count uh, cavalry units that's not going to count um, and siege units that's going to not going to count um, right now that's going to be most effective if i want more warrior units um, definitely something to keep in mind uh, but right now i'm a little bit more focused on giving them ranged units for good defense I also have the choice of beating and tormenting the, the creature for loyalty. Ugh. Um, that would make me become cruel, which is going to reduce the growth rate for all of my cities. Um, or as a governor, it's going to uh, reduce it by 20%. However, it's going to have the bonus of as a military leader, she's going to become bloodthirsty and it's going to give her uh, increased damage for units. Uh, that's just kind of a repulsive one for me. I, I, I don't want her beating the dog. I would much rather have her become compassionate. Those skills, those points over time are going to become more effective in the day to day. I really like to build these skills up to make the most effective character possible instead of spreading them out um, and getting a lot of different characters. I prefer to just have a handful of very effective ones so I'd much rather focus on increasing those points for her um, and not being the guy that uh, beats the dog all right explore a little bit more gather up some goats a couple more goats apparently goats are very popular in this region of the world right now and that is it for this turn
Alright. Zoroastrianism has been founded in Egypt. Uh, my wife has converted to Egyptian paganism. It's not really going to have a huge effect right now. It might make her more upset if that religion has a specific issue with me for whatever reason. Um, I've done something to upset them or maybe I've persecuted a high leader in their ranks. Um, they might be upset with me right now though because I don't have a religion established in my civilization. It's not going to be too effective. Uh, and then recent events have shaken the confidence of Duchess Dominita, my niece, uh, and she's lost some of her charm. She's got a negative one charisma. Um, so something upset her in her life and it's going to give her a negative one. That brings her down to negative three. I'm actually kind of glad that I just switched those two out. I'm feeling a little bit better about that role, um, both because I don't want to reward the greediness that she has traits-wise, uh, and that is just really dropping that, that civic scout. All right. Merchant recently returned from Egypt describes the unusual practices of the people of Yamu. Following the teachings of the prophet Zoroaster, they have started making sacrifices to a god called Ahura Mazda? Okay, I, I probably messed that up. Um, I'm doing the best that I can with some of these titles. Tales of sacred fires, animal sacrifices, and a cosmic struggle between gods are soon spreading around the court. Will you support this new religion? So I have a couple of different choices. I can either say it sounds intriguing. Uh, I will lose a little bit of legitimacy because it is a, a foreign faith. It is a faith from a different civilization. Um, it's going to hurt me a little bit to follow another nation's faith instead of creating one of my own. Um, but it's going to make all of the followers of that faith a little bit happier with me. Or I can come in here, I will get a little bit of bonus legitimacy. Um, they're happy that I didn't choose to follow another nation's faith, uh, but it will upset everyone in that faith. Um, it's early enough, there's not enough people following it. I think I am safe to just gain that easy legitimacy bonus. All right, my son is now 12 years old. He is old enough for me to have him start learning. Uh, because my daughter is already learning tactics, I can see that I do not have a choice of having him learn tactics. Uh, the game makes you spread your choices out as you're teaching these people. Um, something to keep in mind as well, you're not going to be able to teach multiple people the same trade at the same time, or at least have them focus on the same trade at the same time. Um, so you're always going to be spreading those out. You don't. It, it's, it's part of the game's way to try to help it so that you don't end up with... 15 different people trained in tactics and nobody trained in anything else. So, uh, Dominita has discipline covered. Um, Calpernica has tactics covered. I think I'm going to have him focus on philosophy. Another event. By chance, the heir of your, heir of your rival King Philip, the brilliant of Greece. Of Greece? I like how it's double stated in there. Uh, has been caught disturbing the peace in the outskirts of Theranda. She is notorious for her foreign holidays and drunken exploits. What shall we do with G Gorgo? She's quickly aggravating every other prisoner in the city jail. So not only has she driven the city itself crazy to the point where she was uh, so drunk that she got arrested, but she's also driving everybody else in the jail so crazy uh, that we have to do something about it. That's kind of ridiculous. So I am ruthless. That is going to come into play here. I have a couple of different choices. I can send her back to Rome um, with a warning. If I do that, though, it's going to be a little bit against my ruthless personality. I'm going to lose that ruthlessness. Um, and it's going to mean that I am influenced, or no, King Philip is going to be influenced by me. So he's going to be a little bit happy. Uh, I let his daughter off without getting into any trouble. Later on, that might come in handy if I want to convince him to do a specific trade with me or if I just want to help prevent him from going to war with me as quickly as he might otherwise. I also have the option of torturing her just a little bit. Never hurts, you know. Uh, it's going to reduce her courage by one, uh, but it's going to make her vengeful. Uh, it's also going to make her timid. So it's going to give her that permanent weakness of a negative two. Um... So a couple of things that are immediately coming to my mind when I see these options. 
most likely Gorgo, with her being the heir, is going to become a leader in Greece um, pretty soon. If I have her become vengeful against me, that's going to make it much more likely that she is going to be out for blood um, and that Greece is going to come in at me pretty soon. Um, it will really weaken her ability to lead those units, though. So it'll make her want to come with war, uh, to war with me, but it'll make her a lot weaker in that war. That's definitely something that I could choose that would work pretty well. Um, but I kind of want to hold off still. I don't want to upset someone that close. Uh, I can demand a ransom, so this is going to give me a little bit le of legitimacy. Um, it's going to make King Philip a little suspicious. Um, he's not super upset, but he's not happy either. Or I can win her affections. So this is going to make Greece in handy or in general um, much much happier with me, um, and it's also going to. Uh, make the princess specifically endeared to me. Um, that means that she's going to get a bonus for pretty much everything that I do. I'm actually going to go with this one. Um, this makes Greece happy and it gives me the ability to call in some of those favors later on when I actually have um, an ambassador set up to set up trading between me and Greece. Um, so playing the long game with Princess Gorgo, I'm hoping that's going to come in handy uh, later on. All right. My worker finished with my very last set of nets for now. Um, game is recommending a couple of different things. So, uh, you don't have to go with what the game is recommending. If I want to go onto one of these tiles, and even if I want to build something other than a mine, I've decided that a different resource is going to be beneficial for that. Um, I can. It's just a little bit easier to kind of see what resource tile is going to give us the most um, benefit right now so I can see right now this is going to be the most benefit for food this is going to be the most benefit for stone this is going to be the most benefit for iron and that's going to be the most benefit for a shrine um, the shrines especially are going to have recommendations uh, that are going to change a lot based on where there are there are multiple places where the shrine is going to probably be about this per uh, effective um, just for whatever reason the game is considering this the best spot based on how it's arranging things right now um, keep in mind though when basing things off of this the game isn't taking into account the growth that you have on your city It's not taking into account where your specialists are growing or anything like that. That's all stuff um, That only you really have access to so you want to keep in mind um, If this is getting a specific bonus for a resource you want to make sure it is next to that resource right now There is not an easily accessible spot, but there's a good chance that as this specialist pops up and this area expands that I might want to put something here. So um, keep in mind what you're building in your city and how that's going to affect these as well. Uh, right now I am getting negative 22 in gold. That's something I'm going to want to keep an eye on. Um, I'm also fairly low on iron. Ugh. I hate that. I get a plus 8 here. Uh, but that's going to tear out those trees, and I, I really want to save those trees. Um, there's no way for me to replant those at this moment. And I'm also seeing a plus 8 on this mine over here. So, uh, I told you guys I can choose anything to build on these lists as long as it's not restricted by the, the tile type. Um, but down here in my bottom right-hand corner, right next to the mini-map, I can actually see what the game is recommending for that tile uh, without the little pictures on the screen. So I can see right over here that it's, it's going to be a plus eight and it's recommending that I do a mine on this tile. Um, that is gonna make more sense to me right here. I'm gonna have him move over here and then I'm going to come over and find a mine. There we go. And build that. Give me a little bit more iron so as I'm doing uh, that military, it's a little bit smoother, a little bit easier for me. I need money! Alright, gold. Not the most expensive thing I've found. But... Thanks to a recent discovered cache of gold, ministers in Rome plan to fund the construction of a new royal treasury. Of course, this windfall may be better spent on the people than on ourselves. I welcome another place of royal wealth, gain a treasury level 2, Let's see what that's going to do, that's going to give me plus 20 gold per year, on completion it's going to give me 150 gold, also going to increase the amount of 
uh, training that I get per turn, so it's going to increase me from 42 to 44. It's usually going to cost 40 uh, stone. Right now, though, this one would be free. Or I can use that money to make people a little bit more, less discontent in Rome. I think of these two, I'm going to go ahead and build the treasury. Um, usually I try to do things more for my people, try to keep them happy, but right now I don't have a ton of discontent. Um, people are only kind of slightly unhappy, and I'm getting a negative in my money, so this is going to help balance it out. It dropped me from a negative 22 to a negative 2. Alright, another city that is ready to build. I have one specialist available right now uh, for the farm here. It's going to give me another free food. My food's actually doing pretty good though. I'm at 29 a turn. So I'm going to have them focus on a slinger. And I can see that this family um, is automatically going to start with a bonus for that slinger. They're going to get plenty, plus 25 against units without a nation. So that's going to be um, really effective against barbarians. Um, and I believe the, the tribes as well. Don't want to get too close to them in case they try to come after me. And out of order, so we'll go ahead and end here. All right. Greece is converted to Creek paganism. Their opinion of me is now angry. Oh, well. Could be worse. Mostly it seems like they're angry because I'm very close to them. Um, it's being balanced a little bit by being nice to air. So I can see that that's already coming in handy for me. Uh, it's going to deteriorate over time. but eh. Carthage is now at truce with Babylon. So they have met each other. Marcus the minister has died, so I'm, I'm down one more minister. I'm going to get a little bit of experience for his death, though. Uh, so it's not all bad. Alright. In a shockingly indecorous display, service the scientist publicly fights with Copernicus' tutors, claiming that their ways of teaching are outdated and stale. Uh, he asks for the opportunity to tutor, tutor Calpernica herself in the newest schools of thought, including skills uh, in calculating? Okay. You know, I'm spacing that word right now. In the student, it would really push them to greatness. Okay, so I have a couple of different options here. Um, I really enjoy this one. I see it a lot. Uh, because it has the ability to either be really good or, or horrible, depending on what you go with. So my first option here is just go experimental. I love the idea behind this. She's either going to end up intelligent or insane. Good or bad, there is no middle option here. Um, she's either going to get a, a huge bonus or she's going to get a huge negative, um, depending on which scale. And you don't know which way it's going to end up. It's kind of rolling the dice. Um, it is going to make him very happy with me, um, so it's going to make a bonus, uh, give, make it a little bit easier for um, me to convince him to do different things for me going later on. Right now, he's already got a plus 40 for me, though, so just making him happy isn't necessarily the biggest thing. Uh, I can also choose to just pay him to give her additional tutoring, so I can spend 240 gold, and it's just going to give her a plus one to wisdom. Uh, this is the safe way out. You have to pay for it, but you know exactly what you're getting from it. Or I can choose to just back away slowly. Um, that's the coward's option. I'm going to go experimental. Uh, let's hope she doesn't go insane. But at least if she does go insane, it should make for some good stories as we go on. We got lucky. She became intelligent. So if we mouse over that, we can see um, from now on as a leader, she's going to give plus one uh, science per year per culture level. Uh, so culture level is the size of the city, um, kind of expands um, and gets into different levels as we go on. I can go over that the next time we open up a city. Um, it's going to reduce the opinion of foolish characters, uh, so poor Pie Face might not like her anywhere near as much now, um, just something we're going to have to handle. Uh, but it's going to make intelligent characters uh, more happy with her. And that is going to count as a strength. So one thing that I want to keep in mind is I can only have a maximum of three strengths 
and three weaknesses. I have maxed out my strengths right now. Um, I cannot have any more of those. Um, going forward, I'm going to have to start choosing weaknesses if I choose those. It's something I'm going to want to keep in mind. All right. Tell me a little bit about the slinger. I have a couple of different options with the slinger. I can either add a general. Um, right now, I can see I've got two, no, three candidates available. And I can see if I click on that what different bonuses they're going to give us. So, the Duke Consort here. Not particularly effective he's actually going to reduce our defense and the whole idea of this particular unit is to defend that city so it's not something I particularly want to do uh, spurious here cannot die as long as he has at least two HP um, that's really handy for this unit holding that city um, but within a city you can't really attack units directly um, they're being defended by that tile so it might not be super handy for defending the city either uh, and then the Seer here, she's going to get a negative 1% to his ability to attack. Um, but she's going to give a plus 10% to bonus, or a bonus to defense. So that might actually make a really good unit for um, this. I think right now, though, I'm going to let that unit stay without any, any generals. Um, I'm just going to have them stay alert so if any unit comes uh, within about five tiles of this city that'll automatically activate him otherwise he'll just kind of sleep there for a while you go to sleep until I need you all right gather some more resources do a little bit more exploring another landmark all right a little bit more legitimacy Let's see I've got some more Vandal uh, friends down here hanging out. Actually, I think my war with the vang Vandals, so I want to be a little bit careful. Let's see. Ooh. Nope, I'm at truce with everybody right now, so I don't have to worry. Uh, they don't particularly like me, though, so I want to be careful. They could still decide to attack me if I get too close. Alright, looks like Rome is done with its slinger. What are we going to do next? I do not have a citizen available yet. I do see that one will become available soon. Um, so that's something that I want to keep in mind. I do want to build another city soon, though. Um, that is actually going to be perfect. I'll go ahead and have him start working on a new settler um, so that I can get that, that um, ambition for having four cities available. All right, Pieface the Younger has tutored the princess, improving her courage. All right, Pieface, that's not even something you're particularly good at, and you managed it. For a fool, he is managing to be uh, surprisingly effective. Shouts from the trees. Our men hurry for towards the noise and discover an injured Assyrian lying in the dirt. His companions are frantically, or work frantically, to treat his wounds. According to the men, their caravan was transporting goods to the nearest Assyrian city when they were attacked by bandits. They managed to repel the attackers and save their cargo of fine wine. Ah, truly the most important thing to make sure it reaches the destination. So I have a couple of different choices here. Uh, I can treat that injured guy's wounds and I can escort the caravan to its destination. It's going to make Assyria happy. Um, I can negotiate an exchange of protection for the goods so I can say I am going to send um, some units with it and it's going to give me some gold in exchange for that. Uh, it's going to cost me some training right now. I'm not using a lot of that training though, so that might actually be excellent. Um, I can also just choose to kill the Assyrians and steal the whole thing for 600 gold. You know, Assyria is far enough away. Um, I'm just going to be that guy and I'm just going to I'm just going to kill him and take money. I'm a little broke. Uh, my people need it. Rhetoric is done. So I've got a couple of different options here. Looking at pastures, which is going to hugely improve my citizen growth, and it's going to improve my food if I have any pastures nearby. Uh, or I can choose barracks, 
is going to give me the ability to rally troops. Uh, it's going to increase training. It's going to allow them to slowly build up um, experience over time if I build the barracks uh, near my other units as well. I can also choose um, to go for aristocracy. Um, that will unlock the ambassador, which will allow me to start doing trades or things. It will also unlock the ability for me to either put into place the centralization or vassalage law. Um, and that is what the game is recommending. I can unlock spearmen. Or I can unlock a little bit more work with religion. Right now I don't have any religion. Um, I am worried about military units, but I'm more worried about my ranged military units, and the barracks is only for infantry units. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to unlock my ambassador. Um, that is a trait that is going to make my life a little bit easier once I have it. Alright, Romulus gets a little bit of an upgrade. So... Like I said, you get experience uh, for everything that you do. Every once in a while, you will level up as well, and you get a couple of different choices. So I can choose either Steadfast uh, as a leader, uh, and I am the leader right now. It's good to be the king. Um, I get a bonus against units without or without a nation. That's going to help me fight those tribes and barbarians. Um, I can become Highlander, uh, which is going to give me a bonus as long as I'm attacking and defending from a hill. That is something I might actually do. There's a lot of hills nearby that, that could definitely be handy. Um, and then I also have the choice to get a bonus charisma. Uh, and I can see right now that charisma is going to lead to a plus eight in my civics, making 54 right now. So plus eight, uh, it's gonna bring me to 62. That would give me a good amount of civics. Um, at this point, that might be what I'm going to do. He is getting near the end of his life. Um, having these warrior traits would be really handy for someone that I was expecting to stay around for more of the game as I go through more combat. Uh, but he is already in his 50s. Most likely he's not going to survive much longer. Um, I would much rather have a nice buildup of civics in the meantime. Alright. I'm along here. A little bit more marble. A little bit more iron. I'm gonna steal these little hobble that uh, Egypt might have cleared out. If I can get there before them. Harvest some of that silver. And the mountains are gonna reduce what I can do here. Alright, let's head back this way and we'll see if we can get around him on this side. Oh no! The Greeks have grown displeased with us. We stand on the brink of war. A twitchy messenger insists that the conflict may still be avoided, if we agree to a tribute. So, I kind of guessed that Greece was going to be a problem. Um, they are definitely proving that. So we have a couple of different options here. We can either give a tribute of 27 gold uh, to King Philip for a good 40 years. It's going to make him happy with us for 20 years. I'm not liking that option. He wants me to pay him 27 gold when I'm already at a negative one, uh, and he wants me to do it for 40 years when he's not even going to be that particularly happy with me, and it's only going to last for uh, 20 years. I can also choose to go to war. That is going to make him upset. It's going to cost me a little bit of money, but it's going to give me two slingers, um, and it's going to give me a little bit of legitimacy. That is something. Um, I can also choose to gain that extra legitimacy and gain a warrior and a spearman instead. Um, all of these units are going to belong to Rome, so they're all going to be part of that family. That's something that I'm going to want to consider. Um, if I don't have any units available, it's better to have some unit in that, that city defending it than no unit. Um, but it makes them more happy if I have a unit belonging to that family. Um, so most likely right now, I'm going to go with some extra infantry units, uh, and I'm going to say, screw you, King Philip. I don't think he has the technology to ship anybody over here, but now we're ready for him if, uh, if he decides. All right, we have a choice. Uh, we have unlocked either epics or exploration, and I have to choose which, is w or which we're going to uh, go with. 
Uh, so this is going to cost me 400 civics. It's going to be a good amount of the civics that I have. I'm not going to be able to reset this anytime soon. And I have that two choices. So Epics is going to give me a plus 10 um, to border growth per military unit killed. I, I am in the middle of a war. That could be handy. Uh, however, I have an ambition to gain exploration. So that's going to make me want to focus on this a little bit more. Uh, exploration, of course, it's going to be no extra unit consumption um, when outside borders. So basically, it's going to cost less and it's going to be less in food to have people wandering around outside of my cities. I do have to supply those units. Um, and scouts can now move on the water, which is going to give me an exploration bonus early on. Uh, I'm definitely going to go with that. Even if I didn't have the ambition that specifically wanted to focus on this, um, just at this point in the game, I kind of want to focus more on figuring out what's out there, um, whether that is uh, another nation or whether it is just trying to get those bonus points. Aurelia approaches you following your recent achievement. My lord, the Claudius family applauds your recent exploration edict. One can but imagine the endless wonders that await. Do you not hunger as I do to feel the earth underfoot day after day, to pass through still valleys in the shadows of ever watchful mountains, to follow the meandering river until its restless rapids are calmed by the sea? Yet our knowledge of these lands hardly extends beyond our borders. Will you venture forth and lift this fog? Okay. So, I can tell her that her passion inspires me. I'm going to go forth into the unknown. That is going to start an ambition uh, to reveal 40% of the map. I can see that I have 22% of the map right now. Um, it's going to cost me 42 gold and 65 food. Uh, but it is going to gain me an extra scout. That will put me up to three scouts. Uh, I can travel over water now. So theoretically at least exploring that extra 20% to finish that ambition might not be too bad. Uh, I can also start the ambition to clear five tribal sites, um, basically expand to the cities around me. Uh, I don't know that I actually have a full five tribal sites nearby me um, to clear out, so I'm going to want to consider that. I can also just go ahead and tell her to start exploring herself. Um, she has an increased chance for events, but she will not be as likely uh, to or not as likely, but she'll be unable to marry, she's unable to have children, she can't be a governor general or in my council at all. So it's going to lock that unit down, it's going to make it so that um, she is much less available, uh, but it's going to make it much more likely that she's going to trigger something random. So that's something I might want to consider. Um, or I could just choose to upset her a little bit and her family a little bit and get plus two discipline myself. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to focus on the ambition to reveal the map. I really want to know where everything is. Um, that ties into the previous ambition that I was already focused on. That works out. Alright, so got two new units from starting that war. I'm going to move them down here because I really want to get them closer to this edge with Greece. Uh, most likely if they attack that's going to be the first place that they attack from. So I want to make sure that I have units down there uh, ready to respond. I'm coming over here. I'm going to do a forced march and buy myself a little bit more order. I want to get to this site first. If I'm on top of the site, then I kind of own this. You can see it changed to Rome here. Um, Basically, you have a unit on the site, you control it. Somebody else cannot come in, they cannot build a civilization there because you are controlling that city site. Um, otherwise, he could station this, this scout kind of on here uh, and he could just chill out. And then I'd have to deal with him moving on from that point. Um, I'd either have to fight that unit to remove them there or hope that at some point he removes that unit. It'd be really, really annoying. All right, Copernicus tutors bring worrying news. They say that she is indifferent to the martial aspects of her training and instead pursues athletics and exercise for personal enjoyment only. Uh, Calpurnia later confirms this herself by asking you to host a series of sporting events in the capital. 
In Rome, athletics is traditionally a tool for training soldiers. The pursuit of exercise beyond that application insinuates moral corruption and vanity. Will you break with this tradition to celebrate achievements in athletics for their own sake? So, I have a choice to either host the games, that is going to increase the border growth in Rome. Uh, it's going to cost me a little bit of legitimacy though. It's going to give plus one courage to uh, Calpurnia there. Or I can force her to focus on her training. That is going to make her estranged from me. Um, it's going to give her a negative bonus on um, her influence for me. She likes me a fair bit, so it's probably not going to be enough that it'll make a huge difference. Right now, though, I would actually rather take that negative four, um, give her that extra courage, and make her happy. I don't really want to ban athletics for athletics uh, case. They don't particularly need a reason to do that. I don't feel. Alright, one of our workers here is done. I think at this moment, I really want to focus on making sure that my cities are connected. So I'm actually going to have him start building roads. Um, roads are going to cost me stone, which is one thing that I want to keep in mind if I'm low on stone. Um, right now, though, I'm going to go ahead and assume um, that it'll be a lot easier for me uh, to replace that stone later on by the time I'm going to need it. I hit Control R, I can actually do a build two, um, and I can say I'm going to build that directly to the city center here in Rome. I'll have to come back and build a road uh, on this point, I believe, unless it automatically connects it to any urban area, uh, in which case I have been building a couple of extra roads just for fun. We'll find out. Finish moving some of our warriors here down so that our border is a little bit more defended. I'm going to want to keep these units posted within a city, though. Uh, I don't want them outside of my borders. If they're outside of my borders, that is going to make it more expensive to support them. Um, and I want to keep that as cheap as possible at this point. Ooh, goody hut. So I've discovered a landmark. Strange scroll. Sealed within a musty tomb, surrounded by strange signs and sigils. Our scouts discover an ancient but surprisingly well-preserved scroll. Thinking less unsettling, they bring it to you for judgment. While this writing is in an unknown language, it is oddly simple. It feels as if you could quickly learn if you devoted some time to the task. All right. So I have a couple of choices. I can become exotic. This is going to give me a plus two to charisma. Um, let's see what else exotic might do. That is, that is it, although it might lead me to be a little bit vain later on. Um, it is going to lead to events later on, though, so that's going to tell me that something might happen uh, later on. It could be a positive, it could be a negative. I can also find someone to decipher the test or the text, so that is going to give me another court scholar available. Um, that's going to really increase my wisdom, if that's something that I wanted to do. Uh, and then the last thing I could do is just say there's something wrong with this scroll, destroy it that's going to give me a little bit of legitimacy um it's good to be the king i decide uh, whatever i want to decide if i want to just burn the random strange scroll i can i can do that i, I have all the power uh, i'm gonna go ahead and study it i'm gonna get that bonus to charisma um i believe i have done this event before and it has the ability to drive me insane later on but it made for some really really interesting events um and he's 53 right now so it's a good time, good age to start going insane. We can just we can just blame it on the old age at that point. Just say he's going a little senile. See, it's not as bad. All right, this worker over here is also going to start building a road. Um, oh no, wait, scout not working. That explains why that button did not work the way I thought it would. Okay, uh, so this is our new scout that we got last turn. We didn't have enough orders to move him. Uh, we do this turn. I'm going to have him cross this water now that we finally can. And he will start exploring over by Egypt here. Come on, Egypt. Oop. Show me Greece moving around a little bit. I can see that they have a slinger and he's moving towards me. All right. News has arrived from abroad 
Uh, the leader of Egypt is dead. They have a new leader. Her opinion of me is now cautious. Uh, King Philip the Good is also dead. The Good. Psh. King Philip to start the war over nothing. Queen Gorgo uh, of Greece has taken the throne. She's upset with me as well. So she is endeared to me, which is giving her a plus 80. Um, but she still has a negative 80 due to the fact that I'm a different religion. I'm very close to her and I'm at war. She might not be too upset with me if we were not at war. Um, but overall, I'm an older uh, ruler, which is going to make a younger ruler upset. Um, I'm more legitimate than her because of the amount of time that I've been ruling that's going to make her upset um, more at a war which is going to make her upset there's just too many modifiers that are upsetting her right now especially with how close she started I'm not going to worry too much about that uh, more confident than ever in the face of danger Duke Remus my brother has gained plus one courage go Duke Remus uh, one of the family leaders oligarch Appius is the younger has died uh, Duchess Domina my niece um, is now the head of the family, and she's a little bit angry at me, uh, mostly because I removed her from secession earlier on. Alright, now that Princess Calpurnia has completed her study of tactics, how shall she contribute to the court? What role best suits her? So, uh, this is the modifier as far as what kind of leader she is. She can either become a hero, that's going to make her able for her to serve as either a general or or an agent. I don't have agents unlocked right now, so it's not going to be too much of a concern for me. Um, it's also going to give her, as a leader, a plus 50 training per military unit killed, um, and plus 10% attack. So, if I'm in the middle of a war, that's going to be a lot more important. Um, it's also going to, as a general, give me the ability to heal my units in neutral territory. Um, that is probably one of the most effective uh, traits that I have found in a general um, otherwise you have to be within your borders to heal your units um, or give them special training later on um, it, it's it's a lot it's a lot easier especially early game to be able to heal wherever you're at uh, I can also just make her a commander so this is going to allow her to serve as either a general or an ambassador um, after I get aristocracy I will be able to have an ambassador so that's something I want to think about uh, as a leader, it's going to give me plus 10 XP a year for idle movements, uh, and my capital city can hurry units with orders. Um, so that'll actually allow me to burn up some of my orders here to increase the speed at which I'm building uh, anything in my city. For infantry units, or infantry units apparently will get plus 10 defense as well. And then as a general, it will give her a little bit of a bonus to... Uh, flanking. It's also going to give her a plus two to courage and a plus two to discipline. So I'm probably going to go if she was anyone except for my successor I would probably go with the hero. I would really want to have that heal and territory bonus um, but she is my successor right now I'm expecting her to be the person that is going to take over for Romulus after he dies uh, so I want her to have as good a base skills as possible just because she's going to run into a range of options. Um, I already know that I'm at a negative 8 in gold. It's going to become important later on. So she's going to want to have some discipline and it also is going to put her courage at a plus, plus 5. So that's, that's a pretty strong skill. Not the most strong skill. Usually uh, most of the barriers for skills are about a level 3. Uh, and I think above a level 3 is mostly just going to give you a lot of bonus um, but it's going to give her two skills uh, at or above level three and two skills underneath so it's a lot easier to improve later on all right tells me that my family is upset the julius family uh, and if i don't keep them happy there is a possibility that they might rebel so coming over here i can see that they are attached to rome itself I really don't want Rome too angry, so that's something that I might want to consider. Coming over here, um, she is the leader of that family. I was told that this turn, so I can kind of see she is mostly angry uh, because she was bypassed, and she is estranged. She's estranged because we removed her from leadership. Hopefully when he dies, it won't be too bad.
All right, my worker here is done. We have the ability to build some more nets. So these are actually be gonna be on the dies instead of the fish. It's gonna give me a slightly different bonus. This is gonna be giving me some gold uh, and some extra civics to increase that border growth. It's also gonna give a adjacency bonus to a harbor when I build them later on. And it's gonna add the luxury die. Um, I'm actually gonna go with that. That is going to be one of the earliest luxuries that I have access to right now um, to get access to a lot of the other ones that I have. So like this grove here, which is going to give me access to citrus. Um, I'm going to need land consolidation. That's that's fairly further on as far as technology goes. Um, another citrus grove there. Another citrus grove there. I have a lot of citrus and apparently nothing else at this point. Which is okay. Um... Later in the game, I would be concerned, but right now, with only three cities, it's not a big deal. We have finished our slinger here. We want that for city defense, so I'm just going to have him go ahead and keep an eye out on that tile. We're getting our warrior down here, so I'm going to put my spearman there in that city, my warrior here, and I'm going to have both of them just sentry uh, if anything comes close they will fight but other than that I'm just gonna keep an eye on what they're doing right now harvest some of this game get a little bit of a food boost and that's the most that he can explore on this edge he's gonna come back here to the water all right I'm out of movement but I'm gonna come up here and buy a couple of orders um, so you can at least get out of the water. I don't particularly need a reason for that. Um, I just don't want them to have to be in the middle of the water. They're not really doing anything this whole turn. All right. They have finished their slinger. What do we want them to do next? We do have two citizens available. Um, and I can see I do not have any specialists yet in this city. It's something I might want to consider. Um, I might want to do that just for the increased border growth um, and extra food and citizen growth that comes with that. I have a choice between a farmer and a stone cutter right now. Of the two, we've got a plus 50 to stone uh, and a plus 32 to food. Food is a lot less important or a resource overall, I found, just because it's a lot easier to build a farm. Um, I mean, when you run out of food, it's going to be a huge issue. Uh, so you definitely want to make sure that it's it's abundant, uh, but it is also one of the easiest resources to build on. So I have no idea what I want to go with. Ah, I see I've got a level one discontent. Maybe I am just going to go with a quick festival. Um, so they're going to spend five turns doing that, but they're going to produce some extra civics. So it's going to help this expand. It's going to help. Um, the culture expand a little bit, become a little bit stronger so they can build higher level buildings. It's also going to reduce the discontent and increase citizen growth. So it's going to reduce the count on this level here, uh, and it's also going to make it a little bit um, easier for me to get new citizens there. It's something that I can repeatedly do um, over and over again. It's not something that's a one and done. Um, there is no permanent increase from it. So it's more of a turn by turn, like that city is upset, I need to take care of it right now kind of idea. All right, always ready to fight. Princess Demita, my niece, is warlike. So warlike is a trait. Uh, as a leader, it would give plus one uh, training per culture level in all cities. Or as a governor, it'll do plus two per year per culture level. And it's going to upset sloth-like characters. It's going to make warlike characters a little bit more happy. Uh, I'm okay with that. She doesn't have the courage to be a particularly strong leader um, for units, but she's not doing anything specifically right now, so that's actually kind of awesome. All right. So I can see I've got a couple of new technologies. It is recommending um, that I go over here for sovereignty. This is going to allow me to build a garrison. Once I have a garrison built in cities, it's going to allow me um, to actually go in and attach governors to those cities. So that is a huge, huge bonus 
um, to be able to attach those governors. It's going to increase um, specific stats in those cities. It's going to give you a lot more specific control. But it is also a fairly large use of resources. So you have to have the stone to be able to build those garrisons. Um, you actually have to have the workers to go and build them. And then they're going to take one of your urban tiles. So it's kind of a little bit more um, of an intensive build. Uh, starting off and getting a lot of governors in your cities um, is something that could be beneficial. Not something I'm going to do at this particular moment, but it'll probably be one that I get here soon. Uh, right now, I'm kind of split between a couple of different ones. Uh, I really want the ability to automate my scouts. That way I don't have to tell them what to do every turn. But they are slightly more effective while I'm controlling them. I mean, I can make sure that they're harvesting all the resources. I can make sure that they're exploring in a more even pattern uh, and stuff like that. But like every other game, there is going to get a point where I don't want to micromanage every single part of it. So it makes a lot of sense um, for me to be able to go in and just automate those. Uh, it's going to make my life a lot easier. It's also going to open up colonies, uh, which is going to give me the ability to buy tiles with gold if I really want to expand the size of a city, either to give them a specific resource or I decide they're just not growing fast enough on their own. Uh, maybe they're limited on their food, and the only way to help that city grow is to buy a tile that is going to make that a lot more effective. Um, that gives me that option. It's also going to allow me to choose serfdom, um, which is going to increase the effectiveness of my farms and pastures. Uh, it's going to cost me money to do so, though. Uh, something I'm going to want to consider at that point. Or I can come over here and I can go ahead and just turn on the music. Uh, I'm going to go with this one just because it's going to take the least amount of time, and right now I'm not feeling a need for one thing or another. Uh, it's also going to give me the ability to build the Odeon. Uh, which is going to let me build poets, which are really going to help me incre increase the growth of that city. They also get a bonus for being near hamlets, and I do have one or two hamlets going already, uh, so it would not be bad for me to have a bonus on those guys. A couple more deer, a couple of horses. He is out of movement, coming over here. Got some honey. Right now I'm just kind of wandering along the borders here so I can get an idea of how much water is between us. It also makes it a lot easier for me to observe what they're doing. Um, I have at least some of the fog of war push, pushed back from my view uh, from my nearby cities here. And if I have this space explored, that means I'm going to be able to see a little bit easier when Egypt uh, tries to go to war with me. Speaking of war and Egypt. Uh, an emissary from Egypt arrives by horseback, escorted by a team of the finest Egyptian sh soldiers. Carries a message. <sighs> so, she is willing to avoid conflict, but only if we pay tribute. So, we can either send her 360 gold, which... We've got 892, we're not exactly out, but we don't have a ton of gold either. Not something I'm really jumping to. We can assist her with research, so we can give her eight of our research per turn for 40 years. That's almost a fourth of all of our research, and that's really going to help Egypt get a bonus over us. I don't particularly want to do that. Or I can just say, never, I don't care if you're upset with me. Um, this is going to give me the legitimacy bonus, um, and it's going to make it so that I don't actually have to pay them. Um, but it's going to start a war with Egypt. I'm already at war with Greece. Why not? I don't really think they have the power to enforce this at that point. Um, they could choose, or I could have chosen wrong, we'll see. Alright, uncanny. Whispers of Duke Tiberius's uncanny abilities have reached the court, causing a stir among scientists and scholars. According to Academy Gossip, Tiberius spends his days locked in a makeshift laboratory, unraveling the mysteries of man and nature. Many wish to summon Tiberius and probe his mind for knowledge, but we must remember, he's still a child. I think he's like 17 at this point. He is. But still a child. We can summon him for an audience. That's going to give us pl plus 14 science. He's going to teach us some of his wisdom. Uh, but it's not an over the overtime bonus. Um, let's see. I can leave him to his important work. He's either going to become inspiring, famous, or insane. Considering his sister had the choice between in intelligence and insanity, it would be kind of hilarious if he just ends up insane. 
Um, or if I was inquisitive, uh, Bromulus over here had the inquisitive trait, I'd be able to choose to acquire a random technology. That would have been my favorite, uh, but I'm not inquisitive, so I don't get that choice. I'm going to go here and I'm going to say leave him to his important work or roll the dice. And he became insane. All right. We have one on each side of the scale. That, of course, would be my luck. Uh, if I want to see what insane is going to do, I can mouse over it here. Um, it is going to do a negative two in wisdom, uh, a plus two to courage, and a negative two to discipline. Well, at least they make an interesting pair of siblings. All right, we've got a marriage offer. For my daughter, Princess Calpurnia. She is not yet married, but she is 19. So she's at the age that she's able to be married. Let's see. We've got a couple of different options from the Julius family. So this is going to be within my own empire, one of my families that are offering this options. It means I'm not going to have a choice of a foreign um, leader unless I want to ignore these two it's going to upset the family though and the family is already pretty upset so that's something I'm wanna, gonna want to take into consideration um, so I have the choice of numerous here he is 37 he's a judge uh, he gives plus two charisma and plus two discipline uh, and his dowry will make the Julius family uh, 30 influence happier and will give us a dowry of plus 10 to civics. All right, our other option here uh, is Servius. He is a tactician. Uh, he's inspiring, but he is also slothful. Um, he's going to make the family a plus 30 influence as well. He's got a wisdom of seven and a discipline of two. Both of these guys are a little old for a 19 year old girl, I would say. But this is the old world. Things are a little bit different. Um, I don't love either of these guys, honestly. Cerberus is not bad. But I don't like the Slothful mod uh, modifier. Um, and Numerous here, he just isn't that impressive. He doesn't have much. Uh, but I'm going to go with him. I want the extra extra civics at this point. I'm going to be spending a lot of those here soon. All right. I finished that technology. I now have a choice between supporting the policies of centralization or vassalage. So once again, uh, centralization is going to cost me uh, 400 civics. I only have 400 civics, so this is going to take me everything to build these. Um, it's going to give me plus 10 civics a year. Um, and in my capital city, it's going to give me plus 20% science, which right now is going to be 2.8, so about 3 science. Not huge, but it's early game. If I focus on building up my science stuff, that could become huge. Um, or I could go with vassalage, uh, which is going to be negative 50% unit consumption. I'm going to open up my laws screen. So these are my choice here. Um, we can actually go through and I can see like between these two laws it would actually make the Julius family happier if I had slavery it makes them happier for me to have exploration I can kind of keep track of all of these different bonuses and if I want to switch between the two I'd be able to do it from this menu if I had enough points to do so um, it's also going to make it a little bit easier for me to see what these things are going to cost uh, right now the first one doesn't really cost much of anything so I just have to decide what I want. I think I'm going to go with the bonus civics. I am very out right now. I'm down to 42. Uh, so that's going to bring my per turn civics up to 74. That's going to make it easier for me and my officials to actually do things to benefit my civilization. Uh, and I think that's just going to be really handy. All right. So that is just telling me that I am now able uh, to appoint a ambassador. So I unlock that with my last one. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to see who is available. It's not going to really matter right now because I don't have enough civics to appoint this person. But next turn I will. So I might want to have an idea in mind of who I'm going to put in charge. So when we're talking ambassador, there are several different things that they can do. They can either increase 
the civic growth uh, in all of your cities. So I can get a plus one, I can see here with the princess. Um, and that's going to be based off of her traits. Um, she's also going to make foreign families have a plus 10 to their opinion, uh, plus 25 to tribal families, and plus 15 um, to our, our own families, um, like the Julius family that is upset with us. I can see that changes based on the stats of each one of these characters. Right now, I would say I'm most concerned with family opinion, um, but I don't really have anyone who is just really fantastic at family opinion. Um, I have someone who is horrible at family opinion and negative 30, but it's kind of the exact opposite of what I would want. I might end up going with the princess just until she takes over for Romulus, just because she is not super effective at it, but she's not horrible at it either. She's a nice middle ground where everyone is going to get at least a little bit of a positive and the borders are going to be growing. All right, Strange Scroll has triggered another event. Your studies of the Strange Scroll have borne fruit. While at first the language it is written in made no sense, you have rapidly come to understand it. It almost feels as if the scroll wants to be read and is somehow helping you. But of course, that's not possible. The scroll tells of strange creatures and how to communicate with them. The things described are unlike anything you have ever heard of. Although you are learning a lot, studying the scroll is giving you a terrible headache. So, you get a plus one to wisdom, um, but we've got a little bit of a creepy, creepy scroll here. Worried that we got Necromicon level stuff going on. We're gonna start summoning up uh, skeletons, and I'm gonna see a army of darkness moment. So I have two choices. Uh, I can either continue reading that scroll, roll the dice. Um, I'm worried about that headache, though. It's a possibility um, that it is either going to damage my wisdom, since that is the bonus that it's giving me. I'm going to guess that if if it goes bad, that's what it's going to hurt the most. Um, and usually wisdom-based, that means I'm going to go insane or something like that if I keep reading this and it turns out bad. Or I can just destroy the scroll. Um, I can take a little bit of experience for it. Um, I don't know though, I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll the dice. Let's see what happens. See Greece and Egypt moving around a little bit. I am now known as Romulus the Strong, uh, most likely because I rejected those wars. Ports of a raid from a, a vandal outpost. So this is one thing that you have to keep an eye on. Uh, occasionally, even the tribes will generate a couple of barbarians. That's what a raid is, is it's creating a couple of stacks of barbarian units uh, that are going to go and harass nearby cities. Anytime that I see that a raid is being generated from a nearby outpost, I'm gonna wanna check on how that military is doing. Uh, the health of Duke Remus has taken a serious turn for the worse, and he's now severely ill. So he could come back from that, uh, but it is a 70% chance of death. I'm hoping he doesn't die too soon, um, but honestly, he is not a big mover and shaker um, in the world right now for my civilization. He's not really doing much. He's not commanding any units or anything like that. Wouldn't be huge for me to lose him, um, but it would give me a little bit less options. And my princess cannot let go of grievances and is often angry, a most bitter person. So uh, that is going to be her first weakness. She is intelligent, a delver, compassionate, but she's a little bit bitter. Um, it's going to give a negative 40 opinion for romantic characters. It's going to make bitter characters happier, though. It looks like right now the two bitter characters um, that are notable are going to be the queen of Egypt and her. So maybe they'll get along at least a little bit. It'll help build our, our Egyptian uh, relationship that they can both connect on how bitter they are about the world. Now that Duke Tiberius has completed his study of philosophy, how shall he contribute to the court? What role best suits Tiberius? So I feel sorry for this guy. He's like 18 and look at how bald his photo looks. I worry enough about like a receding hairline, but can you imagine hitting 18 and just being like, all right, it's done. Never going to grow this hair again. This guy's got a rough I want to make sure he's got as easy as a life to counterbalance that as possible because that's 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 a rough start so i can choose between being a judge which is going to allow him to serve as either a governor or a chancellor i have not unlocked chancellor yet so it's not something i've got to worry too much for um 
as a leader, it would allow him to hold court, um, which basically I could spend uh, civics uh, or money and I can gain something else. I'm actually gonna, I don't know that I've ever actually held court, so I don't know exactly what it does. I'm going to guess it's going to give you a bonus for civics. Alright, or I can choose a builder that's going to allow me to serve as either a governor or again chancellor. Um, so this is going to be a plus three. He's already a negative two in discipline. Uh, it's really going to be mostly balanced out by what he has. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to actually make him uh, a judge. Um, as a governor, he'll be able to hurry specialists with money, which I think will be really handy later on in the game if he does become a uh, governor. Um, and it's also going to just balance out that negative two. It'll leave us at a zero, which really doesn't give us a benefit for that, but it does give us the plus two for charisma. Um, so at the end of the day, what I'll end up with is a balanced out discipline and a plus two to charisma, whereas just this is going to give me a plus one to discipline, uh, and that's it. So I feel like this is going to be a little bit more effective for him. All right, Pieface has got a promotion for himself. Pieface coming in right at the end of tonight's stream um, just to show that he is not quite out of the game. Uh, he's serious. He's in it to win. Uh, he approaches the court about a title change. He feels overlooked in the court, believes his energy and expertise could be used more productively. Pieface the expert. That's, that's exactly what I think of. I can either have him be the overseer of the field, so it's going to make him a little bit happier. It's going to give me some bonus food. Um, I can make him the pro uh, possessor of veneration. It's going to make him a little bit happier. It's going to give me some bonus civics. Or the steward of the chamber. It's going to make him happier, and it's going to give me a little bit of bonus legitimacy. I am low on civics. I love how this this is a trait that doesn't seem to do anything. It just makes him happier, and it gives him a, a, a one-time bonus on one of these stats, which is awesome for you, but it is literally a, an empty title for poor Pieface. I, I kind of feel bad that he doesn't get anything more effective than that. He doesn't at least get like a certain amount of gold every year or something to, to show that we value him. It's more just like, all right, man. You, you want to move up in the court? You want to prove how serious you are? We're going to give you a new name. Now you just run off to this corner and keep making those funny looking faces. That's, that's essentially what we said to him. At least that's what I feel like. Alright, moving both of our scouts. And then coming down here, I can see these are the two raiding units that were produced by those vandals. I'm going to grab my nearest military unit. Um, and I'm just going to start moving towards them can't quite reach them this turn but that's okay there's only one of me I'm gonna move these spearmen in for support so that they can't be too easily overwhelmed there are two different units here um, one of them is ranged I really want to take that into account all right unfortunately seven o'clock a few minutes over this is gonna be the end of tonight's stream um, couple of things I want to go over before we end tonight's stream. Of course, uh, we have Skittles that will be streaming tomorrow, a little bit more Minecraft. Um, make sure to pop on and watch that. Um, she's been having a lot of fun in that Minecraft game. I really recommend it uh, if you guys want to see some of that. Um, make sure to check out everybody else's videos that streamed this week. We really, really appreciate you guys that are watching these. Um, bear with us. We are we are kind of getting used to everything. I know I was I was out for my video last week. Unfortunately, uh, uh, personal life events happened. Um, we will work on getting those under control. I'll try to be a little bit more consistent for you guys. And, of course, everyone else has actually been really, really awesome at being consistent. Um, we're also going to try to do some group play opportunities sometime soon. Um, we don't really know what game we're going to go with exactly. And we will probably not do a scheduled stream for the first um, 
one or two we'll probably just find a time where all of us are available we will pop on randomly but we will have those uh, available for you guys to watch um, on the channel for two weeks of course and then we will have them posted to YouTube afterwards um, if you want to see some of our older videos we are getting to the point where twitch is removing some of them now so we are posting them on YouTube as we go it may take us a little bit of time depending on which day it is um, there are some days where some of us are streaming and the rest of us are all at work uh, we're trying to work around that as much as possible uh, but the more of you guys that we see the more of you guys that we see watching um, the more we are going to devote our time to this uh, so if you would like to see more content um, follow us um, we would love that it'll reinforce us uh, it'll make it a little bit easier for us to spend a little bit more time on this um, so, end of the night, my name is Battle for Serenity. I hope you guys had fun. I hope you guys are ready to jump back into this next time. Uh, we only got through a couple of turns this time. We had a lot of events going on, but it's one of the really, really fun parts about this game. Um, 200 years is not a long amount of time. Uh, I do have them split into semesters, so it's actually taking a little bit longer for each year to go by but because there is so many events going on because in the old world there is so many things to discover there's so many technologies there's so many civilizations to meet and there's so many interactions going on between those civilizations it really feels that even though you're living throughout one small area of history um that it's so dynamic uh and it, it's one of the really really wonderful things about this game is how event driven it is and how it actually makes you feel like you are running this family and you're moving it throughout the civilization it's 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 incredible i hope you guys hang in um and you watch the next stream have a good night